Dear students, now that you have finished unit 1, you have seen uh, how do you uh, implement a neural network for the applications of simple linear regression and classification using a neuron model, right. So, in the unit 1 you had seen how you went through the basics of deep learning, then you built a regression neuron model that was very, very simpler. Then you began ahead and you went for the classification model. So, the classification model helped you to actually build a neural network, you know, layer by layer. You understood about what is an input layer, what is a hidden layer, what is the output layer, right. So, uh, with the classification, you also got to know that it is not easier uh, to just simply, you know, calculate your neuron model mathematically by hand. So, as your model grows, you require deep learning frameworks. So, that was our conclusion from our unit 1. So, now we have come to unit 2. So, in the unit 2, you have got two parts. The first part deals, deals with the neural network frame, I mean deep learning framework. And the framework that we are dealing in your syllabus is TensorFlow. And uh, uh, apart from that, in unit 2, you, you know, I can call unit 2 has got two parts. Part A, I will be teaching you the basics of TensorFlow and what is a tensor and what are the various operations. You are going to see some uh, lab exercises on it also. And then after that, part B, you will come to the basic concept or I can say ABCs of neural network wherein you can see what will be a perceptron, how neuron model uh, evolved further and then we will move further or dive into the more greater details, moreover I can say more interesting details of neural networks. So, before we actually dive into this, now we have got the first part as TensorFlow. So, that is my topic for today, introduction to TensorFlow. Now, why am I moving into this is you know, I have told you that now your model, uh, whether it is doing regression or whether it is further going for classification or any other application, with the increase in the size of the input, the model, the neuron model has to grow <coughs> layer by layer, right. So, as the number of layers are increasing, as your model is moving from shallow neural networks towards deeper neural network, the number of layers will be growing. So, with that growth in the number of layers, manually calculating uh, the optimization or errors, uh, you know, it is going to be a very tedious task. So, for that reason, we require certain deep learning frameworks and uh, there are many which I already explained you in unit 1. Uh, in our syllabus, we have got uh, deep learning framework as TensorFlow within Keras API. So, in order to uh, facilitate the development and deployment of deep learning and machine learning models, we are going to use deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow. Okay. TensorFlow has gained significant uh, traction in both research and industry communities. Uh, so, it is both popular in academia as well as as well as in the industry. Okay. So, as you can see over here uh, uh, onto the screen, I have given certain introduction to TensorFlow. So, TensorFlow is a scientific computing library of deep learning algorithms. Okay. It is an open source machine learning framework developed by Google Brain Dream uh, and it is one of the most popular and widely used deep learning framework which is popular both in academics as well as in industry. So, all the operations in the TensorFlow framework are performed based on the objects which we call as tensors. So, Complex neural network algorithms are a combination of basic operations such as multiplication and addition of tensors. So, you already know, right, uh, when I explained you about a uh, few algorithms like regression algorithm and classification algorithm, the basic strategy remains the same. You are always going to multiply uh, the inputs uh, to the respective weights and then you add up to the bias, ok. So, basically all the complex neural, uh, neural network algorithms, they are a combination of basic operations like multiplication and additions of these tensors. So, what are these tensors? We are going to see it in detail and how it is going to achieve us uh, better operations that we are going to see. So, when I talk on tensor, the name TensorFlow of this deep learning framework actually comes from its core concept which we call the tensor. So, what exactly is a tensor? 
the tensor is a multidimensional array which is similar to a matrix so uh, you know you when when your uh, data is humongous in nature when your data size is increasing so you are no longer dealing with a one dimensional vector or a two dimensional matrix kind of a story you are actually working with an array which is multidimensional in nature so i can say that even it can be similar to matrix but then uh, you know it has got a higher number of dimensions when i compare it with matrix so tensor is actually a multi dimensional array which is similar to a matrix but it has got a higher number of dimensions okay tensors are fundamental to representing the data in tensor flow which makes it well suited for operations on multi dimensional data such as images sequences and more so you know i to i already spoke that why do you require deep learning framework because your data size is increasing that means your data is no longer a stream of binary numbers your data is no longer a smaller number of uh, uh, matrices kind of a thing you are working with data like images you are working with data like sequences loads of handwriting stuff or text stuff you are working with data which has got probably video so as and now your data size that you are giving as an input to be processed it is increasing so you have to perform a lot of operations on such multi dimensional data what kind of multi dimensional data it could be images it could be sequences it could be many more so when i teach you convolution neural networks at that time you will come to know how image data is different than the normal data that you have been working with so far so that's what when you have got multi dimensional data and a complex data then tensors are very fundamental to represent uh, your data as so from now onwards uh, whatever data as an input uh, you are giving to your particular model that you want to train to you will be representing it in terms of tensors and that's how tensor flow got its name that is from its core concept called tensor now let's look further what are the features of tensor flow so when i come to the features of tensor flow the first feature that i would like to talk on is flexibility so tensor flow provides a flexible and a comprehensive ecosystem for the development of deep learning models or machine learning models you know it is going to support various types of models which may include machine learning models which may include neural networks um you many many types of models like decision trees k min clustering different types of neural networks convolution neural networks or recurrent neural networks etc so it is going to support various types of model that's how it is so flexible that was about the first feature coming to the second feature here it is it supports deep learning with keras api so uh tensorflow is actually known for its strong support for deep learning you know you have got deep neural networks it supports it supports more complex neural networks like convolution neural networks recurrent neural networks also it uh, the tensorflow provides high level api like keras which is going to simplify the construction and the training of deep learning model so this is going to be a very big advantage you know developing models becomes very easier when you have such a good data framework with uh, an inbuilt api like keras so deep learning models can be very easily built